My Lords, I rise to support this important bill. It's a timely recognition of the importance of conscience and ethical belief in looking at the end-of-life decisions and the increasingly complex issues and personal dilemmas that many face in their daily lives. Speaking from a Sikh perspective, I fully support the Bill's sentiments as well as its aims and objectives. Majority opinion can at times be unthinking, and we need to be wary of being pushed or pushing others to support debatable attitudes which at times affront ethical and moral principles. This year, as has been mentioned, while commemorating the centenary of the end of the carnage of World War I, we should pause and reflect that it was also a war in which conscientious objectors were brutally treated or even shot for their belief that it is wrong to kill. Something of the same dilemma was faced by Sikh soldiers when the Indian Army attacked the Golden Temple in Amritsar in 1984. This attack on the holiest of Sikh shrines on one of the holiest days in the Sikh calendar was clearly political. <coughs> soldiers were ordered to shoot innocent pilgrims. <coughs> Not surprisingly, some Sikh soldiers refused and were accused of mutiny. Some were shot, others were cashiered out of the army and some were to spend years in prison. They were accused of treason and disloyalty to their oath of allegiance to the state. True, yet in refusing to shoot non-combatants, they were being true to the ethical teachings of their religion. This requirement to be true to our conscience is embedded in Sikh scriptures. Guru Ram Das, the fourth guru of the Sikhs, wrote, all human powers men make pacts with are subject to death and decay. Righteous teaching alone prevails. In the Nuremberg trials at the end of the Second World War, many Germans accused of war crimes against the Jews and others pleaded that they were duty bound to follow orders, however questionable. The courts held that the requirement of any state was secondary to the overriding norms of civilized behavior. My Lords, rapid advances in the field of medicine and today's increasing tendency to overfocus on the right of an individual can easily lead us to ignore the rights of wider society and the ethical dilemmas that sometimes questionable procedures pose for those immediately involved. The downside of what we do is not always immediately apparent. The initial clearly limited humane objectives of the Abortion <coughs> Act 1967 have over time been largely ignored. Abortion has become, contrary to the original intentions of the Act and the ethical teachings of most religions and beliefs, has just simply become another method of birth control. We must have the right to object and not take part in what we consider to be the unnecessary taking of human life. The Human Fertilization and Embryology Act 1990, which legalized embryo destructive forms of research, and the rapid expansion in molecular biology and new genetic modification techniques can impinge on deeply held ethical beliefs and people should not be compelled to do anything they believe is contrary to the respect for life. While conscience clauses were included in initial legislation, these have been continually eroded by social, social pressures to conform. Those involved in procedures that impact on sincerely held ethical beliefs must be given the right to opt out. This need to respect conscience goes beyond the field of medicine. Yesterday I was invited by the DfE to give a Sikh perspective on relationship teaching in schools. As a Sikh, I am appalled at the undue emphasis on sexual relationships and sexual identity currently being taught in schools. Young children are led to questioning their gender 
and unhelpfully offered support to make permanent uh, uh, potential differences, generally passing phases of growing up. Parents and teachers should have a right to question or opt out of such teachings. Today we need to heed the words of the great philosopher James Russell Lowell, who wrote, We owe allegiance to the state, but deeper, truer still, to the sympathies that God has set within our spirit's call. The bill is timely, well considered, and necessary. I give it my full support.